So this is a continuation of chapter 5, which is on matrices. In the previous portion, we set up matrices in three different fashions. The first way to set up a matrix is by using the matrix function. The second way to set up a matrix is use the R bind or row bind function. And the third way of setting up a matrix is the C bind or column bind function. In this second and last part of the matrices chapter, we're going to talk about how to extract particular elements of a matrix and also how to do arithmetic on matrices. So first of all, when it comes to indexing, once again, as with vectors, the indexes go in square braces, and this time they are separated by columns. So what you're going to have is you're going to have the matrix name out front. Then what you'll have is you'll have a left bracket. You'll put in the row first and the column second. So that's what we're going to be doing when it comes to indexing. And let's set up a, a sample matrix X, and we will again use the matrix function. We'll put in a 1 through 6. We'll say there are two rows and three columns. And this time, let's put them in row-wise. So there it does. It silently sets X. And if you type X at the prompt, there is the matrix we are looking at. Now let's say we want to get to a particular element. Let's say we want to get to the element in the second row and the first column. That's the way it's done using our general syntax up here. Matrix name is X. We want the second row and the first column. So when you look at this matrix up here, the second row and the first column is a 4. And when you hit return, there we go. When you hit return, you will get a 4. Another thing you can do is you can leave one of these subscripts blank. So when you do that, what you're saying is, I want all rows and the first column. That's what the blank means, is give me all of that particular um, index. And in this case, you get a 1 and a 4. You get the 1 and the 4, because that's all rows and first column. Now you can go in the other direction as well. You could say x sub 2 comma space. And that's going to give you just the second row. And you can see that is a 4, 5, and 6. Here's another thing that you can do. You can say x sub 2, comma, 2 and 3. So in this particular case, what we're saying is we want the second row and we want the second and third columns. So in this case, you'll come back with a 5, 6. Those are these elements right here. Those are in the second row, but they give you the second and third columns. Let's say we'd like to get or extract this matrix right here. 2, 3 is the first row, and 5, 6 is the second row. The way you would do that is you would say x sub, and the first question is what rows do you want? And you want the first and second rows. And then what columns do you want? The second and third columns. And you'll see you get the 2, 3, 5, 6. Now let's do kind of a tricky one. What if we wanted this element here, this element here, this one here, and this one here in a 2 by 2 matrix? So we basically want a submatrix, but this is kind of a complicated one. Well, in that case, what you would do is you would say x. And the first question would be, which rows do we want? And we want rows 1 and 2. And the second question is, what columns do we want? And we want the first and third columns. So there you have the 1, 3, 4, 6 matrix. 
Another thing that you can do is you can also put in negative subscripts just as you could with vectors. So for example, if I say x blank negative 2, that's going to say give me all of the rows but exclude the second column. Well, if you're excluding the second column, that's exactly what we did in the previous statement. Let me type x because it's going off the screen here. What we did was we excluded the second column. So these two right here, the 2 and the 5, both went away. And we're left with 1, 3, 4, 6. That's submatrix. Finally, you will seldom do this, but let's think a little bit about what might happen if we said x sub 3. Now that doesn't make sense because we have a matrix and it's got rows and columns and usually we're going to be giving it two dimensions, or two subscripts I should say. In this particular case, we want the third element of x, but if you remember from when we first defined matrices, they are stored column-wise. So internally, this is being stored as 1, and then 4, and then 2, and then 5, and then 3, and then 6. So when we want the third element, it'll just count through those, and it will return the 2, which is right there. And there it is. The second thing, second topic after indexing to talk about here is arithmetic on matrices. And we'll go ahead and stick with our X matrix that's already in there. There it is. If you want to add 5 to each element of a matrix, you can just say X plus 5. Now remember what's happening here. It's got a 2 by 3 matrix, and you're adding a scalar to it. So what it's going to do is it's going to coerce the 5 into a 2 by 3 matrix, so it can add matrix plus matrix. And furthermore, it's going to recycle the elements of 5. So 5 there is going to get coerced into a 2 by 3 matrix of all 5s. And when you hit return, 5 will get added to each element of x. The same exact thing will happen if you instead want to multiply by 5. Again, x is a 2 by 3 matrix. 5 is just a one element vector. So it will co coerce the 5 into a 2 by 3 matrix. And it will multiply them element by element. And there's what you get. Another thing you could do is you could square each element of x. And the same type of thing goes on. There are the squares of 1 through 6 in matrix form. And the last thing I'll do here is go back to one of the early operators when we're using R as a calculator. What happens if you take the matrix x and take each element modulo 2? Well, the remainder on all the even numbers in the matrix will be 0. And the remainder, when you divide by 2, of all the odd-numbered ones will be 1. And so now the matrix becomes 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So that ends um, matrices. And so far we have vectors, which have one dimension. We have matrices, which have two dimensions, which are um, which are accessed by row and column. The next topic we're going to look at is arrays, which can have any number of different uh, dimensions. And that'll come next.